Okay. All right. So as Brad said, I'm Laura Kane. I'm going to be doing tips and tricks as usual. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to kind of talk about, I'll kind of I have screenshots of what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some of these in GP and then I'm going to talk about the last two. But first I'm going to talk about setting multiple default purchase accounts in your um, vendor card. I'm going to talk about writing AR documents. Um, Bill was kind of, he had shown a way to do that. Um, I'm going to show you another way that we can do that. Cash re receipts, he also talked about finding a customer by using it, kind of touched on it, finding a customer by using the invoice number. Um, changing fiscal period name. Um, the login, so in 2018 they came up with, um, when you log in as, when you use the system administrator, um, you do it one time and then you, you don't have to do it again. So that is a nice feature if anybody's out there who's done the system administrator and have to do it every time, type it in. So th that's a nice feature. Um, and then I'm going to kind of talk about a couple things in 19 that I think are pretty interesting and I think people will, a lot of you guys will like as well. Um, so again, I just had screenshots talking, you know, just so you can kind of follow. You'll get these with when Brad sends them out to familiarize yourself with, with what I talked about. Um, the writing off the AR documents, cash receipts, the system admin, and then I have screenshots for the fiscal period name, um, and then I'll, I'll come back and talk about these. So I am going to stop this for a second, and I am in GP. So first I'm going to talk about um, setting up many um, default accounts on a vendor. Um, if some of you, as you go, when you set up a vendor, you will put them in here. And I had, uh, let's see, I had this one here. So if I go down to accounts, a lot of times you can put one account in here. Um, but if you see these three dots here, if you click on here, you'll see that you'll have you can have different options. So I can make, um, for this one, I wanted supplies for every one of my departments. So I have, um, and I can make one as a default. If one's always, um, if it's usually always admin, I can make that the default, but then I'll have the choice to pick these, and I'll show you this. So really all you do is you go into your accounts. Instead of putting something here, you can just tap on the three dots there. You can make one as your default, or you don't have to make any as your default. Click OK, click OK, and I'll click Save. And now I'll go, in a, go into a um, transaction and show you how that works. So I'll pick my vendor. I'll just put in something here. I'll put in an invoice number. And then when I go to distributions, there's nothing there, but when I go into the micro, I use the magnifying glass to look. I only have, I don't have to come through all my GL accounts. I can, I have just the ones I know this is going to be. So I can pick whatever this, this invoice is for. If it's for administrator, you could put the administrator if you want accounting. So it kind of makes, keeps everything together so you don't have to go through, you know, hundreds and hundreds of GL accounts. So you can kind of pick the ones that, it will be, and you just pick from there. Or you can make one as a default, but you'll have these choices that you can switch from. So I will say, that. so that's one. Um, so we'll I'll close that out. I'll just delete that for now. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is writing off AR documents. Bill was talking about that when he was on his cash receipts. He was saying, if you know somebody, um, short paid, you can you can uh, kind of write that off as you're doing the cash receipts. But if you didn't do that, if you missed it, um, didn't want to do it right then, there is something you could do at the end of the month. It's called um, write-off documents. And this is under sales routines, write-off documents. And so this is a nice feature where you can wait at the end of the month, look at your aging, decide, you know, kind of see what it looks like. And you can put some sort of criteria here, um, whatever you and your company have decided that is okay to write off. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to put five for underpayments. Um, 
I'll put that in. And before I do anything, I can preview this and I can see um, what it's going to do, what's in there that I can write off. So I have some underpayments of a dollar, a dollar three, three dollars and ten cents, and what is that, sixty-five cents. So I can choose. I can uncheck some. I can, you know, if I just want to do those top two, maybe. You know, it doesn't matter. You can do all of them, um, but you can choose which ones you will pick. I'll hit OK, and then I'll hit Process, and I'll hit Screen. I'll just I'll show you all the reports that come with this. So really, this is kind of doing um, this is doing a credit memo to write off. Um, but you'll see here. So you have credit it has all your accounts, and we'd set up on your either on the customer card, on a class ID, or on the um, company wide the account number that you want written off. So this is going to 6,700, which is bad debt expense. Um, so I'll close that. Again, more breakdown of the account number, and it's going from AR to your bad debt expense. But this is just an easy way of cleaning it up instead of going back and doing credit memo to clean it up. Um, so we can go right back into write-off documents, and I can do overpayments as well. And I'm going to put that $5 in there, and I can preview it, take a look, decide what I'm going to do. Maybe I don't want to do this one. That's fine. Um, hit OK and then process again. And this one's going to be doing, um, this was a overpayment, so it's going to be doing a debit memo. Unless, you know, if it's not worth giving somebody a refund back, you can just write it off. Um, so right now, this had it going to commission payable, but you could put it wherever you want. If you want to put it to revenue, whatever you want to put it to. Um, so I'll show you, and I meant to show you before, so all your reports here, and this takes up, that's all that you have to do with these little ones. You can just go ahead and write them all off. I think I had this up before. Yep, I did. So you see here I had, um, this is before I did it for one of these, American. Um, so I had a short pay of 74 cents, a short pay of 29 cents, and an overpayment of 490. So I had that, and if I hit click redisplay, all those have gone away. So I got rid of them, and that's all you have to do. So it's an easy process that I like to recommend people do if they have if they aren't doing it already when you do your cash receipts just at the end of the month it's a nice easy way to um, clean up some of these little amounts that you might have missed on your cash receipts um, but it's an easy way just to get rid of it alrighty um, the next one is I'm going to be Bill was kind of talking about this um, when he was doing his cash receipts um, the cash receipts when he was doing, he was in here for cash receipts under sales transaction. So instead, he was putting in a customer and and putting in an amount. But say for whatever reason you don't have, you don't know what the customer. Maybe it's in a lockbox and you don't know who the customer was, for example. But you have the invoice number. So I can do an invoice and I can search. It will search for that customer. So I have one here that I'll do. INV0124, and once I hit OK, it puts that customer on there. So then I could go ahead and go ahead and apply whatever I'm going to apply to that invoice. Um, so that's a nice feature. Bill was kind of he kind of showed it, and he knew I was going to um, be talking about that. But again, you just put whatever the if you have an invoice number, don't know the customer it will help you. So that's that's a nice feature. You can, you know, if, if you're having trouble, if whatever your report from the bank, you don't know who the customer was or something's happened where you, it just doesn't show it, you can find a, if and you have the invoice number, you can do it that way. Um, the next one, as I was kind of talking about, when you go into an admin, when you first log in, you go in, and if anybody does security or Anything with the admin, you might have a password, which is the system admin. If I go into user security, you see I have to put enter security password. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in. And usually, any time you change where you're going, if I, I'll hit put the password in, and then maybe I close this out, and I might go into user. And if I did that before before 18, this is came out in 18. I would go in and um, have to put the user in again. So anytime you're really kind of working with this, you keep having to 
type the system password in, type the system password. But in 18, on one session that you're in, you put it in once and you don't have to keep putting it in. So people who are kind of playing back and forth with securities, it is a nice feature. You don't have to keep typing that in. Um, so like I said, that's in GP18. Um, another thing I wanted to show you guys is um, just changing your, I know I've worked with a lot of um, clients who might not have a calendar fiscal year. And so sometimes it's hard to figure out what what their um, sorry, there you go. What their periods are. So I can see period one. I have to keep coming back here, but now I can. So I have this. This is usually how everybody's is set up. But you can, and I've done these this in the past. So I changed in 27. You could put January. So now you'll have that information when you're looking. If you go into your financial, I can come up and pick an account. Let's pick one that has some money in it. Let's see. I, now I see that I have January. So I, don't, I can do period, and so I can see that. It's a little bit easier. So you can kind of customize that however you guys like it. Um, and before, you would just be in here going, just having your period. So it's nice to, if it is a little bit different, it's not a calendar, it's, Sometimes it's hard what most month is what, so that is a nice feature too. You can kind of play around with. Um, I'm going to go back to my um, because I do not have this. I do not have 19 available to show you this, but I'm going to go back. So on GP19, and Sean was talking about this in his presentation on Smart List. You can do a smart. You can do a lot of Smart List and put user who posted or user who, who um, you know, modified it, things like that. But in GP19, um, it now, for your journal entries and your inquiry screens, it now has this automatically. So a lot of times, you still can do it in your smart list, but at any time you're looking at journal entries and reviewing in, in an inquiry screen, you'll see that the user who posted will be in here now. So. Some of those, I know a lot of you probably haven't, aren't on that, but um, just something, you know, some things I wanted to kind of show you that you can kind of look forward to in the future. Um, and the next thing, and I think some people will really like this, um, GP19 is also added where you can edit, you can enable the long description and a payables transaction. I know I've had a lot of people complain to me that the description, which I think is about 30 characters currently, um, that that's, sometimes that's not enough to put everything you want to. So you're really kind of abbreviating things, um, putting that in there. So with 19, there's this, in the setup screen, it says you can enable the long description of the payables transaction entry. So you mark that, and as you see, there's, there's 200 um, characters. Not that anybody probably wants that many, but you can go up to 200 characters now instead of the 30. And you can change this on your checks. Um, I was working with someone who we were, I was uh, changing, they were using McCorma. So we changed, you know, it's just a little bit of formatting, but you know, if you want all that description on the check, we can do that as well. And then on the regular checks, you can kind of, you know, move things around. Um, 200 characters might be a little much, but um, you know, but again, it's not the 30, maybe you just need a little bit more. So that's a nice feature, I think that, that. Um, is coming out in 19 um, that I think people might be excited about. Um, and that is about all I have. Um, hey, Laura, we got a couple any... questions. Yep, perfect. Excellent. Um, is the feature of locating a bank transaction using the invoice number only available if you have Lockbox set up? No, no, you can do that. Um, I'm sorry, let me close this up. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. No, it doesn't. That was just an example I was using. So, no, you can do it if you just don't know for whatever reason you don't know who the um, customer is, but you know the invoice number they're paying. So it doesn't have to be a lockbox. That was just a an example. So if you only have the invoice number, you can type that in instead of the customer ID. Okay. 